All right, Gary, I'm throwing it to you first. This is your squad. You were politicking with your pick as the only one to pick the Steelers among us as the Bills beat the Steelers 31 to 17. Real quickly, I'll just say about this game. I turned it off when the Bills went up 21-0. I came back right when the Steelers cut it to seven, but the Bills ultimately pull away. So what happened here, Gary? Rudolph's don't come after Christmas. Man, um, I, I can take this positively and negatively, guys. It don't really matter to me. Uh, this game right here, Sean, I actually thought that we were actually – I know it's politicking because we, you know, because they were favored and things of that nature. But like I mentioned on the pod before, when I did pick the Steelers, the reason why I thought was because I thought Josh Allen was going to be regular Josh Allen in terms of be great, but throw us a couple picks and give us a chance to be in this ball game. But at the end of the day, we didn't do our formula, which got us 10 and 7 this year. You know, that whole, uh, you know, JV offense, however Kev used to say, JV defense or whatever. Like it just didn't show up today in terms of offense because we had two turnovers, man. And one was crucial in the red zone, which cost us some points. And we all know our kicker doesn't really miss it. Chris Boswell, golden leg himself. And then uh, we also had one uh, fumble by Pickens. Uh, which he caught and then just let go of the ball. But it was just kind of a weird play, to be honest with you, in a bad time. And they score off that as well. And they quickly get two touchdowns right there in that situation. So, you know, you shoot yourself in the foot, and especially in the playoffs, like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty much over. But like John mentioned, we were still in the game. We still fought hard. Uh, we didn't have Mr. Watt in the backfield, but we had Minka, you know, which was sad because on the last touchdown, when they really broke the game open, you know, he missed one tackle. And that bad tackling us. Kind of not to, not to pick on you guys, but the Eagles had bad tackling today too, just like my Steelers did, which uh, got on some big we'll runs. And Josh Allen, man, uh, he done he did this to me a couple times, man. That he did man, that fool just runs out of nowhere, and like no one can grab no one. Like, he looks so slow sometimes too. I don't know how no one grabs nothing. He just goes and does big four seventy four yards today in the backfield with James Cook having seventy nine. Um, you know, at the end of the day, Josh Allen played a great game, so you got to give credit to the Bills. And, you know, I'm still proud of my team, man. I'm looking back at this whole year for every recap because probably not going to talk about the Steelers again probably until next year going forward, obviously, because no. football season's over. Exactly. You know, off-season. Off-season acquisition, Sean. Shut your ass up. And um, <laughs> I'm nervous, obviously, because of – uh, the quarterback that we picked uh, wasn't playing this game. So obviously that makes me very nervous. But one thing I'm proud of is that we still got a good defense. I got some weapons. We got some offensive weapons too. So I thought like we got uh, good weapons on our team. We got to help the offensive line more so we can run the ball more as well, help Najee and um, Jalen Warren in the backfield. And so I obviously want to hope Mike T, if he doesn't go anywhere else, if he does want to leave and retire, I'm fine with that because, you know, he's been great to us. But I don't want him to get traded or leave or go somewhere else because I know there's so many vacancies open. I think he's proven that he's a great coach, even though it's an offensive league. And uh, you've seen a lot of defensive coaches being let go and being fired. I feel like he's still proven that, you know, he has a formula. And our formula this year was keep it close. Don't bite or, uh, don't uh, shoot ourselves in the foot. And went at the very end. And we almost had that in this one, but just wasn't enough on offensively and offensively to get it done. So I'm still proud of my team. And, uh, yeah, we're going to see next year. I think we still got – we got some obviously major questions of quarterback. But if we can get that handled and we can do something that we don't do, which is go get someone and trade up and go get a guy, young guy, that there's some of the young guys in this draft, I feel like, and just plug and play him if we can, I think that will be best for us because – I just don't see it. We have us having a franchise quarterback in that room at the moment. So that's the only negative. But overall, I'm still proud of my team because expectations were everyone, other than us saying they're making the playoffs. You guys all really fell off my team right after week one after we got slacked by the Niners. And after that, no one was riding on my Steelers. So I'm I'm happy that two smile guys over there again. I'm happy my team showed out, made the playoffs, and got to where we got to and then we laid an egg in the playoffs. You know, everyone's getting picked, us getting picked, getting beat by a lot more than this too. So it was a majority of a close game when we made it to it. So I'm proud of my team, man. Ain't nothing bad to say. Real quickly though, before we pass it to someone else, because you are our Steelers insider here on Stats Over Politics, I know you saw that clip of Tomlin leaving the press conference when the reporter asked him that last question, just saying you have a year left on your contract. I know you briefly alluded to Mike Tomlin there, but what was your takeaway from him doing that? Was that 
I mean, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna pose any other question. What was your take nonsense. away from him doing that? I just know Mike T ain't taking that nonsense. He's still pissed that they lost the game. He's still on the game. That's how Mike T. If you ever watch any Mike, I watch all their press conference pretty much from week to week from all the players, mm-hmm. and that's how he is. He's handling business. He ain't gonna talk about none of that. He'll be. I bet you he's gonna come back and say next time it wasn't the right moment or whatever. He probably not even address it because that's just his mentality on the situation. That's why I love him as a coach because you know. He cares about situations. He cares about these guys, and they'll be disrespectful, I think, to the team. And he always talk about his own personal future going forward, which no disrespect to the journalists, whoever answers that. That's his job to answer that. But from Mike T's perspective, I'm already known. He's probably like, I ain't trying to talk about that right now, bro, which a lot of players don't really want. You know, most players, if you ask them about their contract in the last game, they're not really trying to talk about that because it's all painful. Right? You know, your season's over right then. You don't even got a chance to think about it. You're not thinking before the game, oh, where am I going to be next year unless your team's set? If you're in the playoffs, you're not trying to think, well, where's your team next year? Maybe the Cowboys were because I'm trying to throw a Dan shot. That's my team. Yeah, that's my only team that was looking forward. Uh, Nat, like you should be looking on what's ahead of you. And then after that, you know, you need some time to think about your future. So. You know, that's why – well, that's why I took from Mike T. I still, I still think if he wants to be here, we're going to let him be here. I think that's how it should be. All right, Kevin, how did the JV defense look without their best player, TJ Watt? They scored more the, than the uh, 31 to 17 <laughs> loss to the Bills today in Buffalo. Nice job there, Gary. So I knew this game was going to be this outcome. Um, I don't know why hmm. Gary said it. His words, quote for quote, was, I thought Josh Allen was going to Josh Allen. So let me give you his last four wild card games. 4-0, 350 yards passing, 126.3 passer rating, 14 touchdowns to three interceptions. So I don't know what Josh Allen Gary was expecting. Uh, but the he's one come that lost big games left and he's right. He's come out here and said it. You know, he didn't believe in them, and uh, they got punched in the mouth. You know, you got Pickens talking about you can't play the Bills and the refs. Uh, you know, so we oh, I mean, said Gary, that? Gary, yeah, he said that. You know, Gary had big <laughs> expectations, as you guys all saw. I agree. The there was one person – to come on here and pick them, and now you hear him. He's blaming the refs. Uh, it wasn't that close of a game to blame the refs. So, you know, I'm not going to kick him while he's down because, of course, the Eagles are next, so I'm going to be nice to Gary. But, you know, yeah, Josh Allen you. was coming Gary's and doing his thing, you know. But a lot of people weren't expecting him to do this, but the three of us on the panel all believed in them to come and do this. They've been coming in and uh, playing really well the last six games. So closing out the season, you know, they last weekend they came down to them either being on the road or hosting a home playoff game. And they just came in here to show that they're dominant. It was really nice to see other edge rushers besides Vaughn Miller come to show. Greg Russo came to show. Taron Johnson, Sacramento native, second team all pro, came in here and did his thing. We talked about the Dolphins and all their injuries. The Bills have had their fair of injuries as well. But to see them come in, kind of be consistent, finally get a running game. They, I believe week four or week seven or eight, they changed play callers and they've been running the ball a lot more. We've seen James Cook come to life. Uh, but, you know, Josh Allen's going to be Josh Allen in. Uh, you guys will see by my picks going forward that I'm going to be heavy on the bill. So I'm happy to see them come on. on. And, and Gary, I'm unfortunately happy to be you. But like you said, there's always next year and you guys just got to figure it out. Uh, hopefully Mike Tomlin stays. I'd hate to see him leave on um, just a, a note like you guys did. But no TJ Watt. At least you guys have. At least you can go to sleep. Gary and said if we had TJ, it'd be different. Unfortunately, all 22 starters played for the Eagles. So <laughs> take that. All right, Kaz, well, thanks for the as it comes. As it comes to Mike Tomlin, uh, Brother Jesse says, Mike Tomlin coming to Big D. I don't know if I personally believe that at all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, apparently Cowboys are getting everyone. But, Kaz, the Bills, they beat the Steelers 31-17. to Uh, Was this basically as expected for you? Um, Actually, it was closer than – sorry, my bad. Actually, it was not as – close that I thought I was going to be because I figured that the Bills would have, you know, Josh Allen with the turnover issue would have kind of showed up a little bit and would have, this game would have been more low scoring. Um, and for a second there, it looked like obviously in the first quarter, um, we didn't, we didn't finish it, right? there's somebody's, oh, that, yeah, um, that was, that was, that was Kevin. <laughs> Kevin didn't realize he wasn't muted. We're good. Yeah, you're, you're all good. You're good. all good. Um, but yeah, so pretty much, it was like okay, you know, fourteen to zero, or it was like twenty-one zero, I believe it was at one point. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's like, all right, That's when you know, I left, yeah, it's like, all right, you know, I see it. I right? expected kind of. I mean, I don't know about this, you know, Mike Tomlin would go like that, but we all we all took the Bills or the Steelers to lose besides Gary, of course, and it was for a legitimate reason. But what I did see was this: in the fourth quarter, I mean, like they were they were down by a touchdown. Um, Mike Tomlin fought; he battled. Uh, Mason Ruda. He, he didn't have a terrible game. He, what did he do? He had two touchdowns, one pick, over 200 some odd yards. Like, 
for him being like a backup's backup, it's like that's not bad. I mean, look at Joe Flacco. I mean, he outperformed <laughs> Joe Flacco. And I mean, before the playoffs, nobody would, would have said that. He did fine. Um, they didn't really do much on the, on the run. And honestly, if you look at the Bill stats as well. It's like Josh Allen, he had three touchdowns, yeah, but only like about just over 200 yards. He had that big breakaway run for a touchdown for like 60 yards or something like that. It was crazy. Um, but outside of that, I mean, the Steelers kept the game close. It was up until that last PI that should have been called on George Pickens. And if they would have drove down and scored, that would have been a tie ball game. And I mean, the way the Steelers were moving the ball, it looked like it was bound to, to get to that point. I don't know if they would have scored a touchdown, but I think they would have gotten a field goal range and would at least, you know, cut it down to four points. And instead, turnover on downs, the Bills capitalize and they score and make this score 17 31 to finish the game, which is far worse than what it should have been. So I actually take my hat off to Pittsburgh. Um, a lot of people would have thought of it would have been a blowout, you know, maybe like, you know, 10 to, to, to 40 or something like that, which I respect that. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh battle, they hung around until the fourth quarter. Um, it wasn't a game like that. Like you said, you, you turned it off when it was 21 0, and then they end up coming back. And again, they were within seven. All it takes is one. And I actually thought for a second there, they were going to at least tie the game. I didn't think they were going to win. I thought they were going to at least tie the game. And then Josh Allen would have did what Josh Allen is capable of doing and would have drove down the field and probably won by a field goal. So, uh, again, hats off to the Steelers. Um, you showed signs of life. You're one quarterback away from probably having a legit team. George Pickens, he's a dog. I understand he has a little bit of a bad attitude, but that's a guy who wants to win. And you want guys like that on your team. I don't care about the narrative about, you know, locker room cancer. Give me guys like that all day. Give me guys like that all day and not guys like as much as I love them to death. I don't want I don't want a Jalen Hurts guy who's going to sit on the sideline when we're getting our ass kicked every week and not saying a damn word, not showing any emotions. That only works when 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 you're winning and we're we'll not any expectations. That. Not when you're losing. So George Pickens, I like him. I think that if you guys give him get him a quarterback that can get him the ball, him and Deontay is going to feast. Um, you know, I like Jalen Warren nudging that backfield. Pittsburgh, I don't think you should be disappointed about this season. The Bills are the better team. The better team did win this game. And, yeah, I mean, Bills move on. So, Well, Javon, you were the one that said at the beginning of this segment that Rudolph do not come after Christmas. And, <laughs> unfortunately for the Steelers, that was, that was the a case. Good one. The I did not show up. <laughs> you got to give the man credit where it's due. So, Javon, uh, I know that you're the last to speak about this game, so there's, there's not much else to say. But what were your takeaways from it? Um, the best bet in sports did not cash Josh Allen interception. Uh, Kaz kind of already mentioned that, but I would like to look at this kind of from a different angle. Um, Damn, the right. Bills, the Bills getting Stefan Diggs involved pretty early is kind of telling on when those two, Josh Allen and um, Stefan Diggs, are in sync, it's going to be tough to beat them. Um, this was a team, as Kaz kind of mentioned, and Gary mentioned that the most, their most you know, fear team or scariest team in the playoffs with the Chiefs, I think it's the Bills. And I feel like when Josh Allen isn't turning the ball over, he's throwing for three touchdowns plus, 200 yards plus, and, you know, he rushed for 70 yards too. So his – his uh, the threat of his legs on the ground is, is very pivotal too. I feel like when Josh Allen and this offense is connecting, they can be one of the scariest teams in football. And they, in my opinion, are probably the hottest team in football currently. Um, as far as the Steelers go, um, Mason Rudolph is a third string quarterback for Mike Tomlin to get this team to the playoffs is mm. an understatement and they're really only a quarterback away. Now they're, they will have some options in the, in the off season, whether that's the draft or making me feel good, going man. after <clears throat> Russell Wilson. Um, I heard that. We'll, I we'll, 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 we'll see what. What where the things you know where the chips may may fold, you know they didn't have T.J. Watt. I know T.J. Watt is you know arguably the group, the best defensive player in football currently right now. How much of a difference would he have made? I feel like he one game made, changer. I wouldn't. So he missed like that maybe, one. I feel like he is probably a, a forced fumble, uh, tipped pass, interception. Maybe he could have caused, but I feel like ultimately they still would have lost if he would have played. Um, a lot of people were concerned if the Bills would cover the 10-point spread. Um, I thought the weather would have had something to do with that. Um, but apparently everybody in Buffalo made sure that that field was spick and span. And <laughs> you know, the weather the weather wasn't 
as much of a factor as I thought it would have been. Um, but, you know, I don't really think most people outside of everybody in Pittsburgh and Gary gave the Steelers a shot to win. But for them, like I said, for them to even get to this point and be 10-7 and seven and in the playoffs with a third-string quarterback and, you know, at one point in time, they're only being – it being a seven point game speaks volumes. So Gary, you got you should be damn proud of your team. Expectations, and, man. That's the difference. Sorry to bring up shit, you know. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Vaughn. Finish the last sentence. Go ahead. But pretty much if you want to, you know, the Steelers should be very excited for what their future looks like. And really, they just gotta go get a quarterback, man. There's a bunch of teams in the league that are man. this that are yeah, so Sean, close. I understand. That are so close, but they're literally a quarterback away. Like the Raiders, their team is pretty good, but they have Aiden O'Connell at quarterback. The Steelers have a good, solid defense, weapons on offense, but they have Mason Rudolph at quarterback. Like the Falcons, they have Taylor Heineke at quarterback and Desmond Ritter. It's like there's a bunch of teams out there that are literally that those eight and nine, nine and eight type teams but their quarterback is pretty much all the guys that I listed. And that's the reason why they follow. They come up short. 